we'll be live. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Dr. Ron Weiss, and he is here for a Q&A of which you guys have already submitted your questions. So thank you very much. Please welcome back, Dr. Ron Weiss. How are you doing? Hi. <laughs> is it ventriloquy yet? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a really lifelike dummy. Right. <laughs> so uh, I'm Dr. Weiss. I know you're, you're, you're wondering what a cowboy is doing here with me, right? I mean, it looks like a cowboy. I suspect highly that this gentleman is not from New Jersey. That's right. I'm from Montana. And what do you do in Montana, Bob? I am a regenerative organic farmer there for the last 35 years, although I'm on the farm that my grandfather started in 1920. Yeah. So we go back a ways. And, and you are the creator, or not the creator, but the, the introducer, the, the founder, introducer, yes, founder of? Of Community International. We introduced to the world a, an ancient wheat that we uh, sell under the trademark of Kamut. And this is a grain that for most people who cannot, cannot eat modern wheat, they can eat it without difficulty. Wow. And, and it's evidence-based. So if you go, if, has anyone has ever heard of Michael Greger or nutritionfacts.org? Michael Greger has, has showcased Bob's uh, data and his uh, scientific studies. Yeah. Bob is not just a farmer, he's a PhD. <laughs> wow. In, in botanical biochemistry or plant biochemistry, yeah. plant biochemistry from UC Davis. So from UC Davis, so my California connection. I smell an appearance someday on Chef AJ. He can tell you. I think you told me before that people who are gluten sensitive, yeah, uh, have a have a significant success rate, or even uh, with celiac too, or just gluten. No, we don't deal with celiac because for some people that could be life and death. Right. Even though it's a very small percent. And we don't like to do those kind of experiments right. with people. But even people who are gluten sensitive, if they eat Bob's wheat, which is the most delicious wheat, it's Kamut, they have an 80% success rate of not having any symptom. Yeah, and I can even help you if they have some more time, uh, even increase that percent by how you eat it and what form you eat it. Yeah. Like sourdough, for example. And if any of you have ever heard of, um, I guess, Eden brand, yeah, Eden, Eden, Eden Foods makes the Eden Foods which pasta. They make his his uh, his food products, yeah. Kamut products. And Nature's Path uh, Heritage uh, Flakes, which is their biggest seller, is mostly Kamut. So if you're eating that, you're eating the Kamut. And Bob's Red Mill has it all over the country and available in flour and grain and flakes. So yeah, it's available. Not not so easy to find sometimes, but it's available. Well, what so, the heck are you doing? I just, that's what we wanted to introduce you. And he's hes an amazing, amazing, amazing interview candidate, Chef AJ. Uh, he has a, 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 an amazing book called Grain by Grain. And it is how all of this came about. And uh, he's here visiting us on the farm. Yes. He's, he's world renowned. He was, he was uh, lecturing at Columbia uh, yeah, earlier you yesterday. Know, this week, yesterday. Yeah, and, on the uh, future of food. On the future of food. <laughs> but, but Dr. Ron is one of my heroes. I want you to know. So anyway, yeah. we work together well. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I, I was wondering what you were doing in New Jersey. See you later. Then. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Well, that sounds really that sounds really interesting because uh, people are that are watching live, like Vina said, she loves Camus. Yeah, it is. Have you ever had a Chef AJ? I haven't because I was told that I'm allergic to wheat. So we'll see if I can eat that. But you don't have any markers in your blood, right? I don't think so. I mean, I don't, I definitely don't have celiacs for sure. So then you would be a candidate. Invite Bob on. I'll give you his contact information. Sure. Ask Denise, and then he'll explain how to do it. It's the most delicious wheat you'll ever have. It's, it is highly textured. It's like beautifully chewy. Nutty. It's nutty flavor and it's the they're the largest berries you've ever seen. Well, there's, a, there's a question from Bullion. Is is Kamut easy to sprout? Yes. Yes, it is. Nice. We don't do anything to it to to prevent it from sprouting. So in, in our, our processing and we just harvest it and clean it and then it's sent off to the manufacturer. So if in the case of uh, uh, Bob's Red Mill, they're selling the whole grain, uh, there's been nothing done to it that would prevent it from sprouting. And all of the kamut is grown regeneratively. 
Yeah. No chemicals or biocides are ever used. Certified That's organic, regenerative organic farming. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank hey, you. Nice, thank you. So nice to meet you. All right. So let's jump right in because we got yeah. a little bit of a late start due to technology. So the doctor is in again, when we have a medical doctor, you've got to get those questions in, in advance. And the first one is from Madison. And Madison does follow a plant based diet. And she is worried because she is too thin. And her question is about hyperthyroidism. We get a lot of questions on hypo, but not as many on hyper. And she said, are there any types of nutrients or proteins or anything like that that I should be adding that might help someone specifically who is hyperthyroid? Are there any types of food that I should perhaps be absolutely avoiding? Any advice or tips at all for someone trying to gain weight who's always had a difficult time putting weight on? We don't get that question as much. Well, you know, um, is this a live question or a question that was sent? Well, in? no, she sent it in. She has to, she has yeah. to work right now. So, and so, oh, oh. yeah. So, you know, the issue is, do you have hyperthyroidism or not? No, she does. She told me that she went, you know, that she had her blood tested and she definitely has hyper, you know, it was verified hyperthyroidism, hyper. And is she under treatment with a doctor for this? Well, I think she is now, but I don't think she wants to take medication. And I guess she's yeah. looking if there's I think anything else she can do. Okay. So it, it, for the most part, hyperthyroidism is usually due to autoimmune disease. That the, the, your immune system is sending messages or antibodies or attack uh, weapons to turn on uh, your thyroid in overdrive. And that's what causes the hyperthyroidism. So um, as we all probably know, um, across the broad range of autoimmune diseases, whether it's thyroid, things like colon autoimmune diseases like Crohn's and, and, um, and ulcerative colitis, whether it be rheumatologic autoimmune diseases like lupus or psoriatic arthritis, or even neurologic like multiple sclerosis that had died of whole plant foods. Across all these, this whole category of immune uh, hyper diseases is the most powerful treatment as a category of disease. So I would say that, you know, that's your, your bet. Your best bet is eating whole plant foods in a high level way to help calm down your immune system so that your thyroid will be turned off in overdrive. Now that having been said, Hyperthyroidism can be very dangerous, much more dangerous than hypothyroidism in its acute state. And that's because um, it's, it's, it's a disease of excess where um, thyroid hormone is being poured out in such large amounts that it can, it can speed up your heart. See, that's the problem. And your heart can start to race at very high speeds, and that doesn't sound good. Uh, that's much more dangerous than just, you know, your heart just ambling along and being slower. So what I would first say is, if you do have significant hyperthyroidism and your heart is elevated and you have a blood pressure which is elevated, you may have to go on drugs to first control because there are effective drugs, they're very effective at putting a lid on your thyroid so it can't get up. And then you can also have the opportunity of using the plants to reverse the autoimmune attacks. So if it's only slight hyperthyroidism, yeah, you can start off with the plants alone. So what plants? It sounds like you're very thin, right? She, do, she is. Yeah. Do, we have a, do we have a body mass index? I know I've seen her, she's thinner than me. And I'm, I'm okay, like, so very thin. So, you know, obviously having a, a fast thyroid worsens that problem. So you must correct the hyperthyroidism problem, possibly with drugs and the diet. Um, short of that, what should you eat? Well, as you know, chef AJ, you're always talking about 
people trying to lose weight, right? And when people lose weight, they should have a low calorie density diet in general, right? And that's eating plants. And, and the lowest calorie density are the vegetable category, right? The highest calorie, calorie density is the nut and seed category. And intermediate is the, is the grain category. So uh, you may have to concentrate on seeds and nuts. Things like they, they may play a larger role in your diet, uh, like hemp seed, like walnuts, like, um, you know, stuff like that, like sunflower seeds, um, because they have a lot of calories for a very small package. Avocados, they have a lot of calories for a relatively small package. Um, you know, yes, kale is very healthy for you. <clears throat> Love and kale, right? But you wouldn't want to eat a lot of that because you're filling up your stomach with very few calories. You have to have some of it. And then, of course, the starches. You, you'd go heavier on that too, because that has a lot of calories. So that's what my advice to you would be. Okay. Well, and, and of course, um, and if, um, you know, just, um, you know, some autoimmune diseases, they can be difficult. If you can't, I would try the food road first, the route first. And if you can't accomplish and overcome it with the food, I believe our friend, Dr. Goldhammer, may have some assistance for you in fasting yeah. to turn yeah. off your thyroid attack. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, I, did, I think she said her heart was going really, really fast. And that's- Well, uh, then you need to be on a beta blocker. You need a medication to put a ceiling on that. And that doesn't, that doesn't uh, cancel out your ability to use the foods too. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from Susan. Does stress contribute to developing heart disease, cancer, and diabetes? And if so, how? Yeah. <laughs> so this is, a, this is an excellent, excellent question. Uh, we, you know, I'm a lifestyle medicine doctor, Chef AJ. So uh, lifestyle medicine is now a board certified specialty, just like you would go to a dermatologist or a gynecologist or an orthopedist, you can go to a specialty, not in those areas, but in lifestyle. And lifestyle, the practice of this specialty is based on six pillars. One of them is plant-based nutrition. The second one is movement nutrition or fitness. The third one is sleep. The fourth one is the avoidance of dangerous substances like uh, alcohol or, or, you know, uh, drugs or toxins. And the fifth one is social connection. And guess what the last one is? Stress reduction. And the reason why that is given equal footing as plants is because we are, are finding out that there's an emerging set of data showing how powerfully stress undermines human health. And there is a lot of data now that shows that, yes, stress can increase cardiovascular events like heart attacks and, stre and, and um, strokes. Uh, yes, stress, we've known for a long time, if you can go into any rheumatologist, and I've seen this in my rheumatoid arthritis patients, I can, and multiple sclerosis patients who I have reversed their illness We've taken them off all the drugs for rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, and they're doing fine. And then they'll have some personal stress with their family or their work. Guess what happens? Boom, they get an MS flare. Boom, they get a rheumatoid arthritis flare. And it's not in their head. I see it in their blood work. Their blood markers go up. Um, so that's an example of autoimmune disease. For many, many years, We've known that pulmonary diseases like asthma, emphysema, one of the major triggers is stress, that people can get into big trouble, even causing them to be hospitalized. Uh, and their, their asthma or emphysema can be tipped over by stress. And of course, the list goes on and on and on, right? We know that we have evidence that stress undermines your immune system, right? If it undermines your immune system, how can you most effectively fight off infections? 
How can you most effectively fight off, fight off cancer cells? You can't. So there's a, there's a great body of evidence and it's, it's, being, it's, being, it's progressing and being developed even as we speak. What is the mechanism for all of this illness that, um, that can be driven by stress? Um, well, um, at the end of the day, it's inflammation. Inflammation is what, is what ties all chronic illnesses together. And uh, I'm, you know, I would have to do some more research I, I don't know if they've arrived at this yet, but it is possible that, um, that we can find increased inflammatory markers in people who are more stressed out than people who are less stressed out. So once those inflammatory markers go up, you will get the diseases that follow. So absolutely, uh, in our practice here, uh, one of the things we concentrate on greatly is called uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction. It's a, it's a science. And we not only use it to have people be less stressed out, but once you're very mindful and de-stressed, guess what it's useful for, Chef AJ? Everything. Help you, help you eat better. Get When someone has food cravings, when someone's going to go get that donut, let's say... They're, they're, it's Thanksgiving and there's a whole tray of pastry or I don't know, sugar or whatever it's there. Before they grab that food that's gonna harm them, mindfulness-based stress reduction, mindfulness allows them to analyze that act in the moment before it occurs so that they don't feel deprived in the moment and realize, hold it a second, I was just about to grab that because I feel I'm not part of everyone else and I'm deprived and everyone else is eating it. Well, I can't, I eat it. I want to eat it. And the MBSR in that moment makes you aware of that and says, okay, I've got this. I will use my own tools. I, I don't want that donut. Or I don't want that, that cake. I'll just have my butternut squash, <laughs> right? So we use MBSR for that, for stress reduction. So yes, it's critical in the prevention of chronic illness. Great, thank you. It's not so much that it necessarily causes the disease, if I understand you, it just can exacerbate existing disease. Yes, and, and not only that, if you look at the other pillars, let's look at sleep for a second, right? We said sleep was one of the pillars of lifestyle medicine. How can you have a restful sleep and good sleep architecture if your mind is going like this because you can't fall asleep or stay asleep at night. It will undermine your sleep, then that will undermine your cognition. Year after year of this, you'll, you'll, you're at increased risk for dementia. So, and, and heart attacks and diabetes, because you need, you need good sleep that's whole in order to prevent those diseases too. So there are many ways in which stress, stress eats away at our health. Yep. Stress is desserts spelled backwards. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Yep. Jerry asks, Dr. Weiss, could a whole food plant-based diet have an effect, if it's SOS free, have an effect on trigeminal neuralgia? Huh. Well, I have tried it in two of my patients and it had no effect. Um, uh, so let me explain what trigeminal neuralgia is. Trigeminal neuralgia is one of the most horrific pains that a person can experience. It is worse than a migraine headache. It feels, and people who are suffering from it, it would feel like someone took an ice pick or an awl and stabbed it through your orb, through your eye socket. That's the kind of pain we're talking about. And it's unremitting and it can be constant. And so it's a severe situation. Um, we have come to realize that it is due to a nerve dysfunction. The trigeminal ner nerve, which is a nerve in your head, it's called the cranial nerve because it comes out of the brain itself, 
is somehow dysfunctional. And these dysfunctional signals that this nerve is getting causes this pain. So would I not try a whole food plant-based diet? Absolutely not, because look, whole food plant-based diets decrease inflammation as we just talked about. And well, almost all disease pathology has an inflammatory component as we just talked about. So I would definitely try it, but if, if you don't find it helps you and it might not, uh, or if it doesn't, you know, maybe you can make it a little better, which would be anything would be an improvement. Um, you need to investigate possible surgical uh, remedies. And there are surgical remedies. In fact, there is a, I send my patients to the, uh, the neurosurgery department at Johns Hopkins, which is about two hours away from here. And I did send a patient there. And what they can sometimes do is if they get an MRI of the circulation of their brain, they sometimes can find oftentimes a vein which is pressing against the trigeminal nerve. And if they can do this, a special surgery to uh, separate the vein and take it off from laying off the trigeminal ner nerve, that can be very successful in immediately relieving the headaches. So um, you may wanna look into something like that. Uh, and your neurologist, if you've been to a neurologist, can guide you on that. Great, thanks. All right, this is from Jill. I've been low fat, whole food plant-based and now SOS free for over 20 years. I eat healthy vegan, including tons of greens. My PCP convinced me to have a DEXA scan. I'm 80 years old, a female, my second scan. It came back with severe osteoporosis and now they want me to take Fosamax saying it's safe. I've had three to four strokes due to Lambel's excrescences in my atrial valve. I thought whole food plant-based SOS free lifestyle totally prevented osteoporosis. Has this happened because of the daily shot of enoxaparin 100 milligrams? Should I take the Fosamax? I'm totally baffled. Sorry that I can't pronounce a lot of the drugs. I know, neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> and neither, most doctors can. Uh, does this young lady tell us what her T-score is? She doesn't, and she's, I don't know, Jill, are you watching live? She just says that she's 80, and, you know, that's all she, she says. She says severe osteoporosis. That's what she says, that the dex well, is. If, if she is watching and she wants the message into you so we can get an idea of actually how severe it is, you know, look, um, so we have patients with severe osteoporosis, and it depends how dedicated the patient is, because if they're really dedicated to lifestyle again, right, and, um, and the reason why I'm bringing up lifestyle, and I know this lady is asking about the diet, but it's more than diet. Diet is critical, but it's also, there are other things that you need to be doing in your lifestyle in order to build bone. So, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, when we have dedicated patients, yes, they can reverse their they can reverse even severe osteoporosis. And the reason why is because a lot of people, you know, if you look at a skeleton, you think, oh, it's just bone. Bone is just dead rock, right? It's just for some calcium, some minerals, which is hard, like a, like a table or a rock or wood. That's true, but that's a living tissue. Bones are alive and they keep remodeling themselves day in and day out. They break themselves down and they build themselves up. And what happened in this young lady's case, unfortunately, is that she had a lot more breaking down than she did building up. It's not that there's no building up going on, it's just that the breaking down is far outweighs the forces of building up, but she can change that tomorrow. Tomorrow she can change it. How can she change it? Number one, she needs to load. There needs, and this is why physical fitness, right? I said movement nutrition. That's one of the main pillars of lifestyle medicine and preventive disease, uh, preventive, um, preventive medicine. So uh, you need to load, in other words, carry weight on your bones to a, because in a certain way, 
Not all exercises do this. There are certain exercises that have been shown to load weight. Like for example, how about just walking? Walking may not load enough weight on your bones. Okay, how about running? Running is, is more pounding, right? You're, you're going faster, you're going up and down. Running has not particularly shown to load enough weight on your bones in order to build bone. So they have to be kind of special exercises. Um, there, there is specific yoga poses that have been shown to in, in, in studies that have been shown to reverse osteoporosis effectively. And if any of you are listening, uh, there is a there is a doctor uh, who we partner with. He's in New York City. His name is Lauren Fishman. He was written up in the New York Times many times. He's the world's leading expert on rebuilding your bones if you have osteoporosis using his specific yoga poses. He is a protege of Iyengar, the great yoga master, and he lived with him for two, two years in India. Um, you can go to his website. It's sciatica.org and you can enter in his study. And he has yoga certified teachers. They're, I don't know where this lady is, but they're now all over the country. And you can get them and you can be, cert, you can be taught to do these 12 poses. If you do them an hour a day, um, you can enter the study and we'll watch your bones as they rebuild themselves, they should. So that's, and then there are other physical activities you can do. You can do core exercises, you can do, there's certain special jumping exercises that I have patients do. However, you should only do them under the, under the supervision of your physician, physical therapist, you know, trainer, because you don't want to hurt yourself. Some of, these, some of these exercises, they're aggressive. And if your bones are so thin, you could fracture your bones doing them. And that wouldn't be good. So... I'm just, I gave you those resources. You can look into those. Um, let's talk about the food for a moment. Uh, yes, uh, uh, so my colleague, Dr. Furman, uh, wrote a, a very interesting response to a, a study that came out uh, almost a, a little more, more than a year ago at University of Oxford study uh, as to why vegans, not only vegans, but vegetarians and people who eat plants, have 22% more fractures as they get older than meat eaters. And the reason why is likely that they're protein deficient. What? I thought you get protein from eating plants. Well, you do, but most people don't have optimized diets that are whole plant foods or vegan. So you would have to go through your diet of whole plant foods and make sure that you're getting a minimum of 60 grams of protein a day. You need probably, uh, you're 80 years old, between 60 and 90 grams of protein to rebuild those bones, to build muscle mass that anchors into the bones. Because if, you're, if you don't have a lot of muscle, it, it has no pulling or leverage force on the bony anchors. That's how the bone builds itself too. So you want to build muscle. You need protein to do that, especially as you get older. You need more. So, and then of course, in the pro with protein comes calcium in the plant-based world, right? Chef AJ, um, beans are this protein star, legumes in the plant-based world, and they also have a lot of calcium. And of course, dark leafy greens have a lot of calcium. So you'll put those things together. You'll get a lot of calcium and minerals and protein. That's the nutrition end of it. And then just make sure that you have reasonable vitamin D levels. Um, I know vitamin D is controversial these days, but I would try to get your vitamin D level at least to 50. 40s, 50s, just ensure that. And the last part, I know this is a, whew, too long of an answer, but you asked about the, you asked about the blood thinner, anoxapan. We have no evidence that I'm aware of, of course, I don't know everything in the world, but I'm not aware that that has any untoward effect on bone building. The other thing is that you cannot afford to have a stroke 
If you have these excrescences or irregularities in your heart, that is the top priority, right? You cannot have a blood clot going to your brain because that can end everything. So stay on the blood thinner. I'm sure I, I, was, I think you're muted, Chef AJ. Sorry, yeah. sorry about that. I said, thank you, Dr. Weiss. Sorry about that. I just didn't want you to hear the ambient noise. This is from Andrea. I lost my period and my doctor wants to put me on hormonal birth control. I don't want to go on any medication. I'm already whole food plant exclusive and get sleep and movement. What are your suggestions for getting my period back naturally? How old is this young lady? Oh gosh, they don't say. Oh, I don't know. There's different reasons for losing periods. Maybe she's menopausal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing she's, it sounds like if she wants it, I'm guessing she's younger because when you're older, you're kind of glad when it goes away. Hmm. Yeah. You know, there are different reasons for losing periods. Some of the common ones, well, the most, the most, the overall arching reason is there's some kind of hormonal disturbance, right? Because Women have periods because there are rises and falls, rises and falls, rises and falls of different female hormones, you know, and those hormones have master hormones that are coming from your pituitary gland. It's all set up in a cycle. And when these cycles get off track, all of a sudden you can just stop having periods. So it's a hormonal cycle problem. You usually want to it's not just a matter of, you usually want to find out what, what is the hormonal cycle problem and address that hormonal cycle problem. Now, in, in many cases, uh, did she say how long she's been eating whole plant foods? They don't give a lot of information. So I have one of the most common women's problems, one of the most common medical problems that we see in women of, of reproductive age is they will have uh, bad periods. It's called dysmenorrhea, very painful periods. They will have, um, women will have um, uh, endometriosis, which, which is a hormonal driven problem where you have endometrial tissue, which is being planted, you know, menstruating tissue all over your body potentially or in your pelvis, it shouldn't be there. Ovarian cysts. Uh, these kinds of things are extra heavy bleeding. These are all kinds of things which are uh, primarily driven by abnormal hormone cycles or sometimes absence of hormones via something called, for example, polycystic ovary disease. I mentioned ovaries, cysts. Well, this is more than just ovary cysts. There are all kinds of problems. There's high testosterone levels, and then you're getting over, overweight. There's insulin resistance. There can be excess hair growth. You know, there, it's, a, it's a whole package of hormonal problems. And what I've noticed is for all comers who come with these female problems uh, of, you know, hormones, if they were eating a, you know, an American diet, you know, standard American with meat and chicken and all this stuff in it. That's so, that is so contaminated with so many chemicals, pesticides that mimic hormones and hormones that are injected into these animals that once you take that away and just eat whole plant foods, 95% of the time, all of these conditions I just told you will correct themselves. But it sounds like this lady is already on a whole food plant-based diet. So it sounds like something more may be going on there and that should be investigated. You know, you, and so I would go to a, a GYN for, you know, endocrinologist, they could help her. You're doing the best you can with whole plant foods. Someone should get your periods back. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. From... Tamara, would using coconut oil on my skin every day as a moisturizer after my shower cause my cholesterol to rise? This doesn't seem to go down. Yesterday, it was at its highest, 210. I'm not on any meds. All the other labs are great. I'm 62, eating no meat or dairy, 97% plant-based now for three years. Wow. There's some very questions I've never even heard before. 
you know, you know, Chef AJ, usually when you get it the same, like, where do you get your protein from? You know, I have clogged up arteries, can, can you even plans what's going to happen. But these are really exciting and interesting questions. So that's a fascinating question. You know, you know why? Because as you know, the number one food in the world laden with saturated fat is coconut. Like much more than even lard. If you ate that coconut oil instead of eating versus eating a brick of lard, give me the lard. It would be better for my arteries, my, uh, well, maybe not my arteries, but it would give me less saturated fat. Saturated fat definitely increases bad LDL cholesterol. We know that. But saturated fat that's taken internally and eaten and has to be digested and absorbed through your system. In general, skin, which is the largest organ in the human body by weight and coverage area, it's even larger than the uh, second largest organ, which is the first largest solid organ, which is the liver, um, is generally impermeable to things entering it. And that's the way we were designed. It's waterproof, it in general is fat proof. Um, and when we make pharmaceuticals, um, uh, another word that are topical agents like steroid creams or things to get drugs or elements through our skin, they usually contain vehicles that get around that barrier that allow them to be absorbed. And so, you know, natural substances like putting fat or coconut oil, they just can't get through your skin. Your skin has a, a barrier to it. Uh, so I would say no. Uh, no, it cannot. Uh, if you want to prove this to yourself, do yourself a favor. Get, you, you have your LDL cholesterol, right? Right now you said it was, I'm sorry, she said her total was 210? Two, yeah, 210. 210, she doesn't tell you what the LDL is, right? No, nope. So the, uh, the saturated, increased saturated fat exposure specifically increases LDL. It doesn't increase the other components of cholesterol, not the HDL, eh, maybe triglycerides a little bit, maybe not, but definitely the LDL. So what she can do is now she should completely stop using the LDL, the, sat, the coconut topically for three months, and then recheck her cholesterol. This is an experiment a la Bob Quinn, my friend. He likes getting, he, because he's a scientist, he likes doing comparative comparisons of, uh, with uh, action arms and like control arms. And she could be her own crossover control. And I, I would be highly surprised if she were to show an improvement in the LDL. But of course, she would have to make sure that she eats the same food and she doesn't alter that because that, that would be, that would contaminate her N equals one study. You know, Dr. Weiss, Dr. McDougall was recently on giving a lecture on essential fatty acids. And I, I hope I have this remembered correctly, but he said something to the effect of a patient was either, I think it was tube fed or on an IV. You can't put like fat in those things, or at least not in an IV. And he said that they could rub the, the, the oil on the skin just to give people enough fat. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm, you, I'm mean, gonna, you mean you mean like vegetable oil? I don't. Okay, I'm going to find it. You know what? What I'll do is I'll look for the exact link. I'll watch, rewatch the McDougal yeah. video, and I'll send it to you with that link so that you can only okay. watch that part, and then maybe you could address it. I next would be week. surprised if it's just a natural food product. What it could be, and uh, what it could be is it's a pharmaceutical prod product. I can imagine that maybe. I'm, I'm not a pharmacist or a pharmacologist where they could design fats to be transported through your skin. There are agents, you know, you have to manufacture them in a facility that can do that. I can tell you that we do in people who, we do give fats in people who have IVs. That's called total parenteral nutrition. If someone can't eat and has to live in an intensive environment, like in a hospital, and they don't have a stomach or intestine or they have Crohn's, something where they can't, are not allowed to eat more than seven days or a week or so, or they're on a ventilator, they get this and it contains all the fats 
Every single one of them, essential fats, all proteins are broken down by amino acid, every mineral, every vitamin, everything that you would get from eating, they put in a bag of liquid and they run it into their, into their body. That's it. But I would be interested. Let me know about that. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to rewatch it. And I've asked the, the, the live chat if anybody remembers exactly what it was. Well, thanks. Okay. This question's from Trisha. My father's hands shake all the time. He's 78. He says he has five siblings that have the same problem. I believe he called it essential tremor. Is this something that I can prevent through a whole food plant-based diet or is it genetic? And if so, how does one get it under control? Because I don't want to have this problem and I'm 50. Okay. Well, the best news yet is that you don't have it because an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yes, whole plant foods are great at reversing things, but who wants to get sick in the first place, right? I'd rather prevent the tremor. It seems like, you know, you do have a, there is a genetic um, basis for this because multiple people in your family have it. Uh, essential tremor is known to be genetically uh, predisposition. It, it is a benign kind of tremor. In other words, it's not associated with bad things that are neurologically going on with you or maybe things that have a negative outcome like Parkinson's disease, that, that causes a tremor. There are other kinds of neurologic diseases that cause tremor. Um, and um, what it has been found is that the consumption of meat and animal proteins uh, worsens this. And I have had patients who have essential tremor um, and when I transition them to a whole food plant-based diet, uh, multiple, I, ha I can think of a handful of patients right now, either their tremor completely resolved or else it dr improved dramatically. So this is like in the category of what Dr. Esselstyn says, right? Your genes load the bullet into the gun and what you eat pulls the trigger. So, right? The polar, the, I'm assuming your, your relatives probably weren't eating a whole food plant-based diet. They have the genes, maybe you do, maybe. And so eating the meat pulls the trigger. You have those genes, you can just have the loaded gun. You don't have to pull any trigger. No one even will know you have bullets in your gun. You'll be okay. Thanks. Here's a question about autoimmune disease. My daughter had a recent lab come back low in immunoglobulin A. Does this mean that she has autoimmune disease? She's had stomach issues, but I read that this could mean lupus and I'm worried. Yeah, well, so uh, uh, immunoglobulin A is the antibodies that are put out uh, by your fr front line. By, by your mucous membranes, like in your respiratory tree, in your gut. Um, and when they, when someone, when your body is confronted <laughs> with uh, enemies or attackers, as you breathe them in, like from viruses or as you eat them, you know, that's the first line of defense. So it is low. Did this, did this, is this person with the immunoglobulin uh, deficiency of A, are they plant-based? Uh, she doesn't say, maybe, you know, maybe we could have like a form that yeah. I, I just don't want yeah, to so, have. Like, so, okay. I'm just wondering. So, you know, look, that's a, an immune deficiency. It means that your immune system is not, is not, uh, has a below normal ability to make the first attack. Yes, you have other lines of defense, like in back of that front battalion, you have other battalions like IgG. Those are the antibodies that you famously are measuring like with COVID or with other diseases, like if you've gotten uh, MMR vaccines or you, get a, you want to check to see if you're immune against hepatitis B or something, you check IgGs. But this one is an important one and you don't want to be deficient in it. What I would say is, uh, you eat whole plant foods if you're not doing that, because that has been shown that, that, that to increase IgG, IgA, IgA. Like, uh, for example, there's specific plant foods that are known to do that. For example, mushrooms do that. 
garlic has been shown to increase IgA. Mm. So um, I would definitely do that and, and, and adopt a, across the broad spectrum, whole plant food diets are very effective at not only increasing IgA, but IgG in a good way, not making you attack yourself. They have calming effects on your network. So the, the immune system has a network, just like networks of computers talking to one another. There's all kinds of other elements to your immune system besides you know, the, these antibodies. And it, it makes the network very strong, vigilant, but very calm. And so whole plant foods, yes. So, but this goes without saying, I would definitely, you know, you have to, you wanna be under the care of an immunologist for this, an immunologist allergist, because they have to determine what kind, how deficient you are with this. If it's a serious deficiency, you know, that can leave you open to significant infection. So, um, Definitely eat the plants. That's what you can do. And, and then go to the immunologist. If the plants work, he won't have to treat you with anything. You know, one of the live viewers named Sonia said that she had essential tremors and the diet greatly improved it. It didn't make it go away completely, but it did improve it. And the, I agree. The exciting thing about this lady, she doesn't have it yet. So remember what I said, an ounce of, an ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure the fact that you don't have it yet, I would guess that you're probably going to not get it if you have eat whole plant foods. Not everything is 100% reversible with whole plant foods. And usually I've noticed that essential tremor is one of those categories. It, it is improved usually. That's great. Okay, one more question, if you can answer it in five minutes or less, by Danny. And he says, my wife would like to know how should she do intermittent fasting? She has hypoglycemia and peripheral neuropathy in her feet. And she read that her neuropathy was due to a lack of glucose to my nerves. Maybe he means to her nerves. <laughs> well, oh boy. Well, true hypoglycemia is a very rare diagnosis. It's not, it has to be diagnosed by an endocrinologist. I don't know if that has happened, but it's an unusual condition and it has to be treated in you know, special ways. You would have to be very careful with fasting because you know, a true hypoglycemia. Now, when I say true hypoglycemia, there are certain criteria that are necessary to diagnose this illness. It just doesn't mean, oh, my sugar goes down to, it's 50 now and I haven't eaten for a while. I mean, it causes really very bad things to happen to you. So, so in any event, that should be diagnosed by an endocrinologist. And I would be very careful about any kind of fasting because the combination of fasting and, and or eating and how, it is, how you eat and how you fast can worsen true hypoglycemia. And then you could black out or, you know, become unconscious. I'd be careful with that. Can you be guided do, by your endocrinologist. Are you able to see people virtually or in person in New Jersey? Uh, we are. We are. Uh, so our website is ethosprimarycare.com. Uh, and you can go there and, you know, the, the contact information is all there. Yeah, it's all in the show notes. And you're coming back next month. So if people have questions, you'll be back. I believe it's December 16th. It's a Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And all they have to do is email their questions to us in advance with enough information that you can answer them, but not so much that we're reading their complete history and physical on the exactly. air. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Thanks so much, Dr. Weiss. My pleasure. Great. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We have a bonus show today at 5 p.m., with Ross Chef Yin, and she's going to be making for the holidays 